The sea is us, the family. The family is the sea. We're part of the ocean and always have been. If you want something, you're going to have to work for it. And surfing was something that I wanted. My name is Tekekehu Mokoya Ngafika Butler. Yeah, it's not a novel, it's my name. He would be the fifth generation kehu kehu. Been brought up and bred on the water, in the water. Me and Koro actually at the same Māori muko on our left forearm. They represent each other, both of us there. So uh, yeah, he's got the same on him. My name's Kehu Kehu. His name's Kehu Kehu. I'm the first grandson, so. Oh, you're telling the story. <laughs> <laughs> in Māori culture, we call it tāmuku, and it was a way of telling stories. My story is talking about my family, my nan and koro is together there, and my mum, my sister, and my uncle. So that represents my nan, and that is my father. I got him on my shoulder because that's my strongest part. I'd like to get them on me, so wherever I go, they're with me everywhere. So yeah, they're real important to me, and it's cool to have such a unique culture where we use tattoos like we did back in the day, and mark our skin with stories and this is my story. We were brought up to respect the sea. It became our playground, our pātakakai, which we would probably translate it into our shopping centre. We've been diving since as long as we can remember, eh, bro? Yeah, really. Koro's a hard man. He's the man at diving, that's for sure. Well, where I come from, if you went to the sea, you had to get food going surfing and playing around on the surfboard wasn't the thing. But if you brought back food at the same time here, yeah, they, <laughs> they were pretty well happy. Here's the muscles and one snorkel. Oh, I can't really lift it up, eh? it's pretty heavy. That's so good. That was fun. Oh, he's a little arsehole. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> nah, he was all right. He was saying he's getting too old for the ship. <laughs> Not as young and flexible like I used to be. There'll come a time when only they will go out and I'll stay at home with a knife and fork. <laughs> Two, three years old, started taking them out. They'd even get up early and go and sit in the boat, wait for me to jump in that truck and hook that boat up and go. He learnt a lot about the sea, the currents, the tide shifts, I used to take them up the side of the mountain and sit there and just look at the waves breaking and tell them why they're breaking here, why they aren't here, because of the banks, the deep water and the rips. Yeah, a little bit cold, a little bit chilly. Bro, I don't really want to leave brother. the car. You're going to have to uh, chuck it in the uh, water, G. Are those oh. tears coming out of your eyes? about to be. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Kiwi was playing rugby first, a little bit of rugby with the boys, but him and his cousin Kaya would be chasing butterflies and doing cartwheels. So they didn't last too long playing rugby. They just went straight to a surfboard and Mandy took to it straight away. <laughs> when they get something that they're passionate about and just pick it apart, that's exactly what he did. Just picked it up straight away, stood up straight away and just haven't looked back since. The island's a real remote, isolated place, so um, it's a real special feeling going over there. It's my cousins live on there. When the surf's good, you're like you're in your little paradise, like same as it would have been bloody 40 years ago, you know. In our time, surfing wasn't like they are now. They're radical now. They do things unheard of. Back in our time, it was just cruisy surfing. You know, just stand there and look good. <laughs> as long as you were going down the line, it was sweet as, but nowadays it's just all over the place. When me and Kai were young, like, he used to come here when we were like nine, 
and we legit just built a hut and would like sleep when it stink during the day and then wake up and back out there and have chip sandwiches like just a loaf of bread and some chips and just chuck them in the sandwich it was pretty crunchy but when you're that hungry after surfing for ages it tasted like bloody roast chicken so yeah the good old days his mum actually took him over to australia to a comp over there the aussies just flocked around him he had a really nice style carving the waves like it should be like a dance like a waltz we've seen him the gradual change each year as he's grown and gotten bigger and to develop so quick at a young age for surfing there'd be shit surf onshore winds howling raining and he'd be the only one out there the mount's not very well known for good surf but if you can surf these waves well when you get on better waves you should be able to thrash it and that's exactly what's happened Dad's always guided me in surfing. It was just drilled into my head that if you want something, you're going to have to work for it, and surfing was something that I wanted. I knew him as a really young kid with his dad, with Khan. Me and Khan and the boys, we used to compete against each other a lot. He has a lot of his dad's traits, which is quite amazing. He's got patience, he's got a lot of kindness there, and he's really methodical in his working, just like his dad. Elliot, all right, Reed's doing pretty good. Kehu's doing pretty good. And the cool thing is, it's like, bro, <laughs> they're moldies. <laughs> That's the meanest. A couple little runners for Brecky. After competitive surfing, my main goal would be to make surfing a pathway for our young Māoris and young Polynesians. Because I know heaps of young Māoris who just don't have the backing around here, but surf amazing. One day, bro, you'll have kids and the opportunities are really small. I'm healthy. <laughs> so today I'll go foiling. It's a... I can't explain it, mate. It's that. <laughs> Honestly, I just love the speed. He was huge for us Māori, especially for me when I was going up through the ranks. He was definitely a guy to look up to. I probably foil more at the moment than I do surf. I surf when it's big and really clean and pumping. When you've had as much time in the ocean as I have, I kind of know what I can get out of the conditions. So instead of chasing everything like the young guys do, I just choose waves that are coming that are smaller actually have some fun and yeah, just use all my knowledge to my advantage so I don't have to paddle so much. Catch three ways, get home, and maybe I'll have a lunchtime surf <laughs> and do it all over again. Three times a day, mate, three ways. So nice to see Elliot and Kihu around. I've been fortunate enough to watch them grow as uh, when they're younger, little pimply faced kids, they've really come into their own now. They're gonna get the chance to be kings of the country. Early days growing up in Raglan were pretty simple. My brothers got a surfboard, one surfboard between four of us, so it really meant they got a surfboard and I got to watch. We were sharing that for a while, eh? Well, mainly I was using it, I got tired, and then it was Daniel's turn, but then I, you know, I, I bounced back pretty quick. I, was, I took it off him again. We started taking him on trips, eh? He was so small, he'd fit in a fish bin with the wet seats. <laughs> In the back, he's in the back. <laughs> he was a guy I looked up to when I grew up, whether he was doing the right stuff or the wrong stuff. <laughs> he shares his stories and what he sees and experiences on his surfboards. Very worldly Raglan is now. But, you know, back in the day, it was surfers versus bikies. Chains were actually a weapon of choice. <laughs> I was always searching for my route and I found it in the surfboard as my window back to my culture. This area here that I'm working on, this is like Monaco heads and down through the north side of Raglan. Some of the themes I cover in my art evolve around the ocean. Just patterns that I see, certain wave size, 
there's a pattern that the wind makes and it runs up. The perfect face, you know, land people, they don't really sort of understand what's required for the perfect wave. When I was growing up, I was always being warned not to go to the ocean for fun. You should be afraid of the ocean. Don't have fun out there. This is your pantry, respect it. For us going out, crossing those boundaries, we went out and had fun and we loved it. Just being out in the ocean, this is probably the view that our ancestors saw when they sailed here, coming into land on our beaches. They uh, read the winds, the red waves out surfing and out in the water. We see those, tohu, all there. For me as having a Māori background, you know, that like, touches up in here. Surfing is a privilege, you know, it's being out in the water amongst all those ancient beasts that are like roaming around us. You know, that, that, we gotta throw some respect at that. We're considered pretty much scumbags, I suppose. We'd just work half a day, the surf pump, we wouldn't work at all. When I'm away, I do miss New Zealand a lot. Living the simple Kiwi life is pretty good. I still froth on surfing. Whenever it's good, I'm still running around like a grommet, just foaming at the mouth to get out there to get some waves. 